Born in 1945 to Kenya first Vice President Mzeja Ramogi Oginga Odinga, Raila Amolo Odinga stands out as one of the most popular politicians across the world. His supporters have given him several nicknames over the years, including Tinga, Aguambo, and most recently Baba. His political journey being a unique one and a controversial one at the same time, dating back to his detention in 1982 after he was directly linked to a failed coup by a section of Kenya Air Force's officers to the current handshake between him and President Uru Kenyatta. Personally, I met Raila in 1997. In the U.S., you can tell there's something about him. He's pushy. He has an understanding of what needs to be done. Laila is a multi-headed octopus. You don't know where he is and what his next move is. So you don't know which head of Raila is where and who is dealing with, right? So sophisticated is Raila's political life that even some of his allies rarely understand him. In excerpts from Raila's autobiography, Raila Odinga, an enigma in Kenya politics, former Rongo member of parliament, Delma Sotino, is quoted describing him as the best propagandist in Kenya. In 1992, he was elected as a member of parliament for Langata constituency, a position he held for two decades. Moments after the death of his father, Oginga Odinga, in 1994, Raila bowed out of Ford, Kenya, and formed the National Democratic Party, NDP, which he used as his presidential vehicle in 1997 general election, emerging third. Few days after the 1997 election, things changed as retired President Daniel Arap Moi invited Raila Odinga to his Kabarak home for talks, which led to marriage of Kanu and NDP, but the marriage was short-lived. <laughs> It was a way of Moy seeking a more, uh, try to sustain his power, but through somebody who can give him that legitimacy. I mean, as a strategy, it's not to understand his modus operandi and then to devise a way to contain him, which is always to co-opt him, to bring him in, in an um, unclear role, and to cool, to calm him down and his supporters. Come the next general election of 2002, again something similar emerged. The National Alliance Party of Kenya allied itself with the Liberal Democratic Party, LDP, then led by Raila Odinga, to form the National Alliance of Rainbow Coalition, NAC. On December 27, 2002, NAC won a landslide victory over Kanu. Those days were no mobiles, mobile phones, cell phones. So Honorable Kibaki was waiting for... Raila at Intercon to address the media. And one of his aides walked and whispered to him. He said, Mzee, something, something. And Kibaki got up and left. And what was said was that uh, Raila has just been seen in state house with Makto. So you see, Kibaki never forgave him. Again, he was betrayed as former President Moi Kibaki violated a memorandum of understanding his sign with the opposition chief in 2002 to throw his weight behind the latter's presidential ambitions in 2007. The presidential election in 2007 is with no doubt the most contested one following the election skirmishes witnessed at the time. It was assumed that at the time that indeed opposition leader Raila Odinga had won the election, a perception that precipitated the formation of a grand coalition government. Political pundits argue that ODM leader Raila Odinga since time in memorial, his political outfits do not stand the test of time. Flash forward to 2017 polls and we are now talking of the handshake between President Huru Kenyatta and opposition leader Raila Odinga. A similar marriage like the one Odinga had with the retired Moi back in 1997, only that this time political parties are not involved. So Uhuru looked at, looked at it from a point that he didn't seem to have any, he had a legal uh, endorsement, but he didn't have political legitimacy. So Uhuru, who's a very smooth operator, who knows nothing better than PR, knows that, uh, yes, let's contain Raila. After all, it's rumored that he won in 2017. So it's a matter of let's contain him, let's uh, keep him calm, and then down the road we'll have to deal with the inevitable. Political pundits arguing that former Prime Minister Raila Odinga is a very calculative man who sometimes uses politics for business. 
the problem is there is also a huge perception and a lot of reporting that in a lot of all these dealings, Raila has had a lot to gain for himself. He is in fact a billionaire. The Building Bridges Initiative led by Senator Yusuf Haji is said to be a political leverage that Odinga will use come 2022 polls. Also relentless, um, but he's very unstrategic and he's also a poor manager. Because also, you see, you cannot run for president, for example, for 30 years. You know, running for president cannot be a career. Uh, and you cannot run for a seat and be unable to capture it when everyone is saying that you won. So that means something is wrong. But I think what Raida is, is really working on is the Building Bridges Initiative. I think uh, uh, Raida's core uh, political tool uh, he is going to use to mobilize the country and consolidate his next power game is the Building Bridges. They call him a guambo, meaning the mysterious one. But without a doubt, Raila Odinga's political victory is one that cannot be explained. The political trajectory of former Prime Minister Raila Odinga has been one that has intrigued many, with some loving him more while others loathing him. The recent handshake between him and President Kenyatta even raising more queries on whether it's a plot to contain him or it is a sacrifice for the nation. Irene Mwangi, KUTV, Nairobi.